Dave knows how. Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. Um, I had one of my subscribers a couple few days ago ask me about the Harbor Freight Quick Hitch and uh, wanted to get some measurements. Uh, the closest Harbor Freight to him is, you know, I can't remember what he said, 58 miles away or whatever. And trying to drive over there just to get measurements was kind of a waste of time. So anyway, I thought I would do a video and just show what the measurements are on this Harbor Freight Quick Hitch. And, uh, you know, kind of killed two birds with one stone. That way, if somebody else has a similar question, they can just go to the video and check it out, look at it, and see what they think. I bought this one, um, I don't know, a couple months ago, and my plan is to weld it to this plate that's on the front of the tractor. It's a quick attach plate, and then we're gonna have one of these on the front of the tractor. So uh, I'm just kind of getting laid out to do that project, haven't even started on it yet, but I had this plate laying around that I'd already bought, and you know, just sitting around rusting, I figured I may as well put it to some use, so that's gonna be the plan for, for this thing in the future. We'll see how that goes. Let's get on with some measuring. So measuring from the outside of the bottom hook for your bottom lift arm to the outside of the bottom hook on the other lower lift arm, we got a measurement of 29 and three quarter from outside to outside, okay? Now, these uh, pieces that go on the bottom, thickness-wise, they measure about an inch and a quarter thick, a little less than an inch and a quarter thick. From the inside to the inside on this one is 27 and a half inches. And one thing that I should probably point out is these things are just thrown together in China. I don't think they put them in a jig and clamp them down and, and have them consistently the same uh, because I've got another Harbor Freight quick attach and the measurement is about an eighth of an inch difference. Does that really matter that much? Uh, you know, probably not. Probably not that big a deal. So, but anyway, you get the general idea of that measurement. Now, I stuck this piece of uh, old broomstick handle. Let's measure that. So this measures one and an eighth inch in diameter. We're gonna set that down in the bottom here, so it's all the way down in the bottom, and then we're gonna measure off the top up to this hook up here on the top, and to the very bottom of this hook is um, 16 and a half inches. So these things are bolted in I generally do away with this bolt-in setup, and um, I generally go with some pull, uh, pull pins with, uh, you know, some clips to hold it in place. Now, the next size up hole is this, you know, the, the, the pin that you put in here that you can find at track supply and places like that you know, it's a little bit bigger than what these holes are, so you have to take a drill and drill through there and open the holes up a little bit, but anyway, let's move it up as high as it goes and measure it. Okay, so to the bottom of this hook is 17 inches off the top of this piece, and then we'll take it and move it all the way as low as it'll go. and then measure from the top of this to the bottom, and we're at 14 inches. So that's how much travel you got. So let's, um, let's move it up one bolt hole. Okay, one bolt hole. So I think that last measurement was 14 inches. 
Now we're up to um, 14 and 7 eighths. So um, it moves it up 7 eighths of an inch going the next hole up. Um, so I guess it's 7 eighths increments pretty much, you know, all the way up. So anyway, let's see. I think we've covered all the measurements on this side of the quick hitch. Now I think uh, what this subscriber wanted was measurements from the back side. So let's flip this around. Okay. And let's get some measurements off the back. So if I understood his question correctly, his top link has a big ball in that top link that goes up in here. He wants to make sure it's going to fit in there. So let's see what this dimension is. So the inside dimension of this is uh, not quite two inches and one eighth of an inch. So, you know, uh, that's, uh, yeah, it's just under two and one eighth inch wide in there, all the way down. That's pretty consistent. You know, measuring on the outside here, it is two and an eighth exactly, but it kind of tapers in a little bit. So let's see, let's get back here and measure back here further. See what that is. So now all the way back here in the back, it's measuring two inches. So, you know, if your ball is two inches wide, it should fit in here with no problem. If it's any bigger than two inches wide, you may have to trim a little bit off each side of that ball to get it in there. Uh, but yeah, because it, it just kind of tapers in this way for some reason. And that's basically inconsistencies of when they welded this thing together. You know, they didn't really mount it in a jig or anything, evidently. You know, they just kind of put it up here so when they welded it together and it, it uh, heated up and then cooled down, it kind of it kind of flanged out like that and it gave it somewhat of a, a taper type deal going in this way. So anyway, but that's your measurement there. Let's get on and measure inside of here and see what this is. So inside of here, we're looking at um, just under an inch and five eighths just barely under an inch and five eighths. Let's see if I can get up in there any deeper. That seems to be fairly consistent. Just under one inch and five eighths of an inch. One and five eighths. <clears throat> so, you know, your ball needs to be able to fit in the air if it's wider than, you know, one and five eighths, uh, then it's probably not gonna fit in there. Uh, you know, some of them, uh, most of those balls, you really can't, you know, really can't cut down on the side. But anyway, I think that covers uh, pretty much all the measurements uh, that he could possibly want. Um, frame wise from the bottom of the frame in case he decides to build one from the very bottom of this frame to the top of this frame 18 inches at the top measuring across 30 and a half inches 30 and a half inches Inside the inside, 26 and a half inches. Anyway, that'll kind of give him an idea, you know, if he decides to build his own, maybe he can go off those measurements. So anyhow, if any of you guys are thinking about buying one of these uh, Harbor Freight Quick Attach, um, 
Is it worth it? I think it's worth it myself. I mean, they're pretty cheap. I had a coupon, ended up getting this one for like, um, I want to say it was like 79 bucks. I mean, that's pretty cheap, you know, so can't, you really can't beat the price. Um, it would have been nice if this piece of metal right here, this part of it was a little bit thicker uh, material. I don't have anything to compare this to. I wonder if maybe the land pride is thicker right here, but let me grab a quick hitch that I have over here, bring it over here and show you uh, something about it. Okay, so this is uh, the quick attach that I've been running on this tractor for years, so you know, for, for quite a while. And <laughs> I had to replace it. And, you know, I can't blame this problem on the quick hitch, really. I mean, I'd like to, but really it was operator era. Um, I was plowing snow and I was, I had the road blade on there, turn around backwards and I was pushing backwards with it. And I, I came up the neighbor's driveway and then and it, it goes up a hill. And then when I went down onto the street, there was a pothole in the street. And the corner of that blade caught that pothole and twisted. And it twisted this whole quick hitch. I mean, you can see if you look up in here, hopefully this is showing up on the camera. I mean, this part is supposed to be going straight down and you can see how much that thing has moved over here. That thing's moved one inch that way. And the same thing on this side, it's moved one inch that way. So it's basically bowed this whole thing out. I mean, you can see it's, hopefully that's showing up. This is, this is bent pretty good in here. Whereas on the new one, it's straight, you know? So um, we don't get a lot of snow around here, okay? And, and, and the, the, the snow that we do get, when this happened, we got 10 inches. And the thing about in Virginia, when you get 10 inches, most of the time, if you don't plow it right away, it becomes eight inches of wet, heavy, nasty, hard to move stuff. Because it melts just enough and then refreezes and uh, it's just a nasty mess and it's heavy and it's hard to move. I like to watch some of you guys' videos that uh, plow snow so that I can, you know, learn better how to plow snow myself because that's one of the videos that I'm really not able to share with people is, uh, you know, explaining how to plow snow because there's a lot of other guys on YouTube that know a whole lot more about plowing snow than I do because they get snow all the time, you know, and, and a couple that come to mind is, um, AK Dad stuff, if you haven't seen his track, uh, channel, go over there, check it out. I'll put a link in this video to his channel. I always enjoy watching his channel. He gets a lot of snow, and he has really got plowing snow down to a science. Um, another one is, is, uh, is uh, Joe, Joe Lesage, and I hope I'm saying, pronouncing your name right, Joe. Apologize if I just butchered it, but uh, you know, hey, we do the best we can down here in the South. Um, he does right much uh, snow plowing. Uh, Joe, it, I tell you, if I was married, my wife would probably not let me watch Joe's channel because uh, Joe's a bad influence on me. He uh, <laughs> he makes me want to go out in the shop and spend money and build stuff and. Uh, I just can't help it. But yeah, if I was married, my wife would probably say, you can't watch Joe's channel no more. You can't, 
you can't go play with Joe. He's a bad influence on you. So anyway, <laughs> those are two channels that I really thoroughly enjoy watching. And I'm sure that a lot of, well, a lot of my subscribers already subscribe to those two channels. So that just goes to show you how great a channels they are. Um, I'll put a link in the description and at the end of this video to both those channels. Go over there, check them out, watch a little bit of their stuff. If you like it, subscribe, hit the bell icon. You'll get notified whenever they upload videos. And those guys upload a lot of videos pretty regularly. They're growing channels and um, they're, gonna, they're gonna do well on YouTube. I, I know they will. I know they both will. They're both just wonderful down to earth people and um, just a part of the tractor community. I consider my brothers. So um, go check them out. Can't say enough good things about them. Anyway, that's it for this video. I will continue to watch some snow plowing videos and hope I can learn how to use <laughs> uh, a better technique to plow snow than to destroy <laughs> quick attaches. Uh, because even though I get them pretty cheap, uh, it does kind of add up after a while. <laughs> but I'm glad I didn't destroy, you know, a uh, three or four hundred dollar land pride. So that's, you know, that makes me feel a little bit better. Seventy nine bucks, I can I can live with having to replace it. I had this one. I want to say like five or six years, maybe. So uh, you know, it's been on here for a long time. So it's uh, you know, all in all, it's held up good. Obviously, I'm happy with it because I bought one to replace this one, which is on the back of the tractor now, and I just went out and bought this one, you know, a couple months ago for a project to weld on this front plate. And so that way I can use this front plate for various different things, like I can put this on here and pick up a couple rear implements and move them around or, you know, whatever the case may be. One of the things I was thinking about was my um, my trailer hitch that goes on the back actually fits on the quick attach, and so I could you know put that on here on this quick attach when it's mounted to the front and move trailers around the yard. You know, small trailers, not you know not fully loaded trailers, but I don't like to I don't like to use uh, the tractor to move a track a trailer that's really heavy got a, got a lot of load on it. Uh, it just, it's not designed for that, so I just kind of don't do that. But if the trailer's empty, you know, I'll move it around. Again, thanks for watching. Don't forget to rate, comment, and subscribe to the video. If you enjoy the video, if you enjoy the stuff on the channel, I appreciate all my subscribers. I really do. It's been so fun and gratifying to meet you guys and, and talk to you. If there's a video that you'd like to see, you can leave it in the comment section below. And if I can do it, I will. It may take me a, a bit to get it done, but I'll get there eventually. Anyway, thanks for watching. Take care. Later. Don't forget to rate, comment, and subscribe. Thanks for watching.